My dearly beloved in Christ, we give thanks to God for the gift of our lives and another beautiful opportunity to be in his presence. And I welcome you to Kali Reflections and Catechesis with Father Nebo. My name is Reverend Father Boniface Nebo. And today being the seventh Sunday after Easter, a whole lot come to mind for our reflection. Have you ever considered the energy and the power behind the word up? This two-lettered word, UP, up, especially when it comes before or after another word. Let us consider, for instance, stand up, upward, upcoming, upgrade, update, wake up, brighten up, bright up, open up, take up, stir up, build up, look up. Now, there is something very peculiar about all of these words. Their uniqueness lies in the fact that the word up is attached. The energy and the, the power with which we feel when we mention these words come because of that word up. You will observe that when one removes the up from these words, they tend to lose their vitality, dynamism, and enthusiasm. In our first reading today, we, as we read from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verse 55 through 60, we read the story of the death of Stephen, the first Christian martyr. The Jewish authority themselves at the time accused him of blasphemy for preaching about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And they hatched a plan to stone him to death. In a narrative, we learn that Stephen was filled with the Holy Spirit and looking up to heaven, he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of his heavenly Father. My dear friend, the Gospel reading from the Gospel of John chapter 17 verse 20 through to 26, on the other hand, tells us about the priestly prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ, which focuses on the oneness of his followers. The question of Christian unity comes to mind and their need for divine provision and protection. The passage starts with our Lord Jesus Christ looking up again to heaven. There is something about looking up that the liturgy of this particular Sunday wants us to learn, especially following the ascension, the taking up, the going up of our Lord Jesus into heaven, which left the apostles gazing up again towards heaven. Looking up means redirecting our energy, our attention, changing our focus from a lower region to a higher one. In the book of Psalms, particularly Psalm 1 to 1, verse 1 through to 2, David exclaims, I lift up my eyes to the hill, to the mountain, from where my help comes from. My help comes from the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The life and ministry of Jesus Christ shows a constant looking up to heaven for divine encounter and empowerment. After his baptism, he looked up. The heavens opened and the Spirit of God descended upon him like a dove. And the voice of the Father comes down upon him saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 16. Again, this is a testament to Jesus' identity and affinity with his Father. Before the miracle of the five loaves of bread and two fish, Jesus looked up again to heaven and gave thanks to God. And there was multiplication that fed 5,000 people, excluding, according to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verse 14 to 16, excluding women and children. Dear friends, looking up means looking up to God. Looking up to heaven means looking up to God. In the letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, verse 1 through to 2, St. Paul instructs us as follows. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. From these words of St. Paul, we come to understand that looking up is a mindset. In fact, a heavenly mindset and an important key to success. 
When you keep your gaze on your mission, when you keep your gaze and focus on what you set out to achieve, the moment you begin to look down or look back, you begin to get distracted and the word of God, again, in the Gospel of Matthew, that anyone who places his hands on the plow and looks back is no longer fit for the kingdom, comes to bear. The apostles who received the Holy Spirit after the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ, when they went up to the upper room where they kept looking up again to heaven in prayer. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 13 through to 14. Generally in life, my dear friends, dear brothers and sisters, we often look up to people and to certain events to take us from one point to another. We look up to somebody to motivate us. We look up to somebody to help us. We look up to people to give us all assistance we need. Often, we get more stressed than blessed, more frustrated, frustrated rather than favored, and more setbacks than successes when we keep looking around for help and assistance rather than look up to God. Like in the words of David, for where our help shall come from, if not from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I therefore charge you as I charge myself, dear friends, dear brothers and sisters, we need to look up to God because his love will never fail us. Psalm 1, 3, 6. And he is always faithful. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. We need to look up to God because he will supply all our needs according to the abundance of his riches in glory. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. We need to look up to God because he cares about us even when our closest relatives abandon us. Psalm 27, verse 10. We need to look up to God because his goodness and mercies are forever sure. Psalm 23, verse 6. Beloved in Christ, as we celebrate the last Sunday of Easter and look forward to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, let us stop looking back and looking around, but resolve to look up to the Lord, whose steadfast love and mercies never end. If you don't look up, you screw up, and God will not raise you up, and you may end up giving up. So brace up as we move up to the Lord in the Holy Eucharist. It is a glorious Sunday indeed for us already. A second dimension and a second point from our, for our reflection today is on inclusive, inclusive Christianity that does not exclude God. And one of the most challenging teachings of Jesus is turning the other cheek to someone who hits us on one cheek. That can be difficult. By this teaching, Jesus was speaking metaphorically about the need to avoid retaliation in the face of violence and insults. He gave a very practical example in John 18 verse 23. When a policeman struck him, he only asked, why do you strike me without retaliating? Jesus used turning the other cheek as a template to teach us not to retaliate or pay back evil with evil. Interestingly, my dear friend, Jesus mentioned the right cheek for one to hit another person on the right cheek, the person must either use their left hand or the back side of their right hand. Using the back side of one's palm to hit someone has a humiliating implication amongst the Jews. Therefore, Jesus implies that revenge and vengeance is not the correct response in the face of humiliation and violence. In fact, Jesus suffered the greatest of all humiliation, if you look at the narrative of his life, by dying a shameful death on the cross, Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 23 and Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. The warning of Jesus that we, will, we should avoid retaliation also resonates with the need to practice an inclusive Christianity, interacting with everyone, including those who hate and mistreat us. This point is clearly expressed in the statements be holy for I, the Lord, am holy, and be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. The adjectives used to capture the idea of holiness or of being holy in Greek and Hebrew are hagios and kadosh. Kadesh, holiness. These two terms, among other things, denote the idea of being set apart, consecrated, 
isolated, differentiated, and preserved, notably for a, for a purpose. In our understanding of being holy, there are two extremes we must and should avoid. The first is the attitude of unnecessarily avoiding some persons because we see them as sinners who could contaminate us. This was the attitude of the Pharisees in Luke's Gospel, chapter 18, verse 9 to 14, who said to God in his prayers that he was not like the other tax collector or like the tax collector. The second extreme attitude is the attitude of doing what every person does, whether right or wrong. That is the attitude of being ashamed of our identity as Christians. Even though we should interact with everyone, it is also necessary to know where to draw the line so that our interaction with people does not prevent us from creating a spiritual space where we encounter Jesus who always wants to be with us. No matter what we do, my dear friends, we must keep in mind that we are the temple of God as we are reminded in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and must not allow our interactions with other people to prevent us from giving God the praise and worship that is due to him. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. And this reminds us that we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own possession, a consecrated people set apart that we may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We must therefore be different from those doing the wrong things. Even when everyone is doing the bad thing, being holy or being set apart implies that we refuse to compromise and we refuse to join them. Beloved in Christ, as we celebrate this great day, an inclusive Christianity reminds us that the gospel message is not something we keep to ourselves alone. Instead, we must share our Christian life with others, share the good news with others who do not believe by boldly living according to our identity as holy people set apart to worship God and share in his kingdom. May God give us the grace to practice an inclusive Christianity, caring, loving, being attentive with everyone and for everyone without excluding anyone. May God continue to enliven on us and give us the grace to continually do this and continue to hold forth the values of our faith at all times. Amen. Please help us to share this and to all platforms where you belong and let us continue to spread the word together. Journey with us on Cuddly Reflections and Catechesis. God bless you and happy Sunday.